just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we will fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, former President Donald Trump now facing a federal indictment. What we've learned so far about the newly unsealed charges against him. Scripps News Live begins right now. Hello and welcome to Scripps News Live. Thank you so much for being with us on this Friday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Right now, former President Donald Trump facing another unprecedented indictment and 37 criminal counts in total. This case involving alleged mishandling of classified documents. Now, the indictment against the former president was just unsealed within the past hour. The Justice Department is accusing the former president of obstructing the investigation into the classified material he kept when he left the White House. Trump is saying he will turn himself in on Tuesday in Miami. According to newly unsealed documents, the Justice Department's charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information. And that's followed by one count each of conspiracy to obstruct justice, withholding a document or record, corruptly concealing a document in a federal investigation, a scheme to conceal, and false statements and representations. The former president's legal team is already seeing a shakeup less than a day after the indictment news broke. Jim Trusty and John Rowley tell Scripps News that they resigned this morning and they will no longer be representing him in this case or in the ongoing January 6th investigation. Trump thanked them both on his Truth Social platform, adding that he will now be represented by Todd Blanche. We have team coverage for you of this stunning developing story. Scripps News political correspondent Abjoy Burnett live in Washington right now. But we begin right here in New York with Scripps News national political correspondent Alex Miller. Alex has been tracking the story from the very beginning. So Alex Trump recently indicted in New York, accused of paying hush money to an adult film star, but now He's facing these counts in this classified documents investigation. Explain these new charges for us, Alex. Yeah, these these dozens of charges are much more serious, at least as we first look at them, than the ones that we saw here in New York back in April. Looking at the charges that you just laid out, they range in penalties from 5 to 20 years in prison, $250,000 fine for each of those charges if he is, in fact, found guilty. But looking specifically at those first 31 counts, Veronica, that you mentioned, the willful retention of national defense information, in other words, classified documents, uh, relating to our military. That is what is so important for us to be looking at because this is what has to do with the Espionage Act. You cannot uh, show this kind of information to people who are not supposed to be privy to it. And when they laid this out in this 49-page document, they went through each document. They didn't obviously give us the insight into what's in it, but they did tell us whether it was about military activity in a foreign country, military capabilities in a foreign country. There were documents that he kept from intelligence briefings. They had dates of when all of these documents were created. So you can kind of piece together that there was a lot in here, multiple documents showing uh, very sensitive information for our national security. And when they, you look at what this trial is going to look like, they are asking for 21 days to try these felony charges. Um, and they really laid out quite a timeline, saying that this began right after the Biden uh, inauguration when he went to Mar-a-Lago. They say Mar-a-Lago is not an authorized location to be storing these boxes no matter what. And when you start to look through uh, the entire indictment, Veronica, there are photos that explain where these things were being kept. I mean, they were being kept in places um, like bathrooms, showers. Um, they were in ballrooms uh, where people had easy access to those ballrooms, people who either belonged to Mar-a-Lago, were guests of Mar-a-Lago, um, and then they went to a storage room uh, in the end, and those photos show dozens of boxes, floor to ceiling, and then they show basically a situation that unraveled where some of these boxes fell over and classified documents were just laid out on the floor. I mean, they really went into quite a lot of detail. They talked specifically about two occasions in 2021 that actually happened at his golf club in New Jersey at Bedminster. Uh, they say those documents uh, were shown in two, on two separate occasions in 2021, uh, first to a group of people who were not authorized to see these documents. And according to the transcript in this indictment, the former president acknowledged that people were not supposed to be looking at these, that they were not declassified. 
He said he could have done it if he was still president. president. So those are really interesting in, as they try to formulate this story. And then that second uh, instance at Bedminster, which is also obviously not an authorized facility, um, they look they dealt with somebody from his political action committee he showed them highly sensitive maps and so uh, i want to read you a little bit of some of the quotes that his attorney relayed to the fbi because part of these uh, this indictment is that he suggested that his attorney falsely represent to the fbi and the grand jury that he didn't even have the documents one quote said what if we what happens if we don't just don't respond at all or we don't play ball with them or wouldn't it be better if we told them we didn't have anything here? In one instance, they discussed giving the attorney uh, the documents to put in his hotel safe, and Trump suggested that he pluck out the documents if he found anything bad. I'm going to go ahead and I have to interrupt you right here because I want to get live right now to a special conference that's taking place, a special press conference, rather, in Washington, D.C. This is a Today, special counsel, Jack Smith. Let's listen. Concealed. Charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. The men and women of the United States intelligence community and our armed forces dedicate their lives to protecting our nation and its people. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Adherence to the rule of law is a bedrock principle of the Department of Justice, and our nation's commitment to the rule of law sets an example for the world. We have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. Applying those laws, collecting facts, that's what determines the outcome of an investigation. Nothing more and nothing less. The prosecutors in my office are among the most talented and experienced in the Department of Justice. They have investigated this case hewing to the highest ethical standards, and they will continue to do so as this case proceeds. It's very important for me to note that the defendants in this case must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. To that end, my office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. We very much look forward to presenting our case to a jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. In conclusion, I would like to thank the dedicated public servants of the Federal Bureau of Investigation with whom my office is conducting this investigation and who work tirelessly every day upholding the rule of law in our country. I'm deeply proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Thank you very much. Why Florida, sir? Why did you decide to bring the case in Florida? All right, we were just watching Special Counsel Jack Smith there uh, speaking before reporters. This is the first time we've heard him speak now that that federal indictment uh, before the former president has been unsealed. Uh, he was saying one set of laws in this country, they apply to everyone. Smith also saying that his office is going to be seeking a speeding trial, and he looks forward to presenting the case before that special grand jury in the state of Florida. Obviously, there's a lot to unpack right here. But one of the biggest questions right now is what happens next. Next. Political correspondent Abajoy Burnett is live in Washington. She has those next steps for us. Abba, you and I watched uh, the special special counsel uh, addressing reporters. Uh, what did you make of what he had to say? Well, one of the key things that stood out to me, and I want to read it here, um, he said there appear to have been a deliberate uh, actions that were taken to obstruct justice. And this is what he's saying that the former president did. And then he also said that there is one set of laws for everyone, no matter who you are. He said he was very proud to stand next to the prosecutors who have gone through the steps in investigating this case. And if you take a look at the pages in this indictment, they really... Uh, 
uh, laid out a, a, a list of things that they believe the former president did in trying to obstruct the investigative process. Remember that this started about two years ago where the National Archives said they believe that classified documents were taken down to South Florida, uh, to Mar-a-Lago, and they wanted to get those documents back. And after months of trying to get those documents back, they said they were going, uh, they were running into roadblocks. And the indictment really spells out some of the things that they believe the former president had a hand either directly or indirectly in doing in making it harder for members of the Department of Justice and the FBI to retain those documents that were classified. And Veronica, when you look at some of the allegations in this, I'm just going to read some of it here for us. Um, it said that some of these, uh, some of the details in these documents uh, contained uh, things about weapons capabilities, both for the United States and other countries, nuclear programs and weapons capabilities, potential vulnerabilities of the United States, plans for possible retaliation, and the list goes on and on. And, you know, when you read this indictment, it appears as if the former president really had a direct hand in trying to figure out where those documents were and where they would be and also what was in the documents. There was one section where an attorney, um, there were three attorneys listed here, attorney one, two, and three, and there was one instance where one of the attorneys went and reviewed the documents and then having a follow-up meeting with the former president, the former president asked how bad is it? And there was a, an, an imp indication or implied, I should say, um, there, it was implied from the president, according to these charging documents, according to this indictment, it was implied that that attorney should just then go in and pluck out anything that could have been potentially damaging for him. And we also heard Alex reference what the documents, the spaces that the documents were being kept and what that looked like. In one instance, there were documents that were in the shower of a bathroom. There were documents that were stocked high in boxes. And then there were steps that were being taken to try to move them according to this indictment from South Florida up north when the president was traveling up north with, with his family for summer vacation. So you heard uh, the, the, the special uh, prosecutor there um, saying that you know, there were deliberate steps that were taken to try to make this hard for officials to retain those documents and then to obstruct in this process. Uh, many legal watchers are saying these allegations are quite damning. All right, Ava Joy Burnett, live in Washington. Ava, thank you so much. I want to go ahead and dig deeper right now on this indictment. Joining us is Tamara Holder. She's nationally recognized for her work on women's rights, civil rights, and she spent almost a decade as a legal analyst on Fox News. Tamara, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with what we just saw with Special Counsel Jack Smith. What did you make of what he had to say? And what are your thoughts in terms of whether or not the government can win its case against the former president? Well, I think that the press conference certainly sets the tone of how serious the feds take this case. Uh, the federal, a federal type of investigation is a much more serious kind of investigation than, say, a state case. And I'm, and I'm not minimizing a state case. It's just that the, the perception of how serious it is once you are before the federal court, um, it's just, it, it appears differently. And I think that the tone was set today that there isn't going to be a lot of fanfare um, out of the, the federal district court. Um, there is not going to be a lot of uh, flames and excitement. This is a very serious case. Remember, he said that these are people who have the highest level of integrity that have um, uh, been working on this case. These are lifetime people who have gone out of law school and worked in the for the FBI and for uh, and the Justice Department for their entire lives. So. Um, I think what he's saying is that any idea that this is some political witch hunt is is far from the case because this is not what these people do here um, in this court. All right, so you're saying special counsel Jack Smith really setting the tone here. I want to talk about some of the charges that we're looking at right now. What are the most serious counts among the seven charges that we've now heard about? What are the possible penalties for a conviction on, on any of these counts or even just one of them? And will we potentially see the former president go to jail? 
Well, to answer your last question first, absolutely. The difference between a state case and a federal case is that when the feds put a case together, they have their, or when you're charged, they have their case. They, they feel that they can get a conviction immediately out of the gate once an indictment is filed. In a state case, let's just say that somebody's picked up for you know possession of marijuana or whatever, they, um, they don't necessarily have all of the, the facts put together before they charge somebody. The feds move very differently, basically opposite to what you'll see in a state case. They put their case down, they file it, and they say, we're ready for a conviction today. We're not waiting on anything else. We've interviewed everybody. Our, our investigation is essentially over. And um, and so I think that that's the scariest thing for Donald Trump. Uh, the next thing is, is that he has, I believe, um, conspiracy charges in there. And the conspiracy charges uh, are up to 20 years in prison. The other cases or the other charges are, I think, 10 years. Um, there is something called a consecutive sentence and a concurrent sentence, depending on you know, if he pleads guilty or if uh, a jury finds him guilty will depend on whether the court sentences him at the same time for all of them or one after another after another. So they could all add up or they could be all served together. I want to move on to the venue in this case. How difficult will it be to prove these charges against him before a grand jury in Miami, opposed to one in Washington, especially since investigators may have that recording of Trump admitting that he kept a classified document? So why would the DOJ move this case from Washington to Miami, and will it be harder to get a conviction? Well, I think that the, the fact is, is that these, these documents and the crimes um, or, or a lot of the crimes took place in in um, in Florida. Uh, certainly, they chose. But what's very interesting is that Florida is essentially known as a Republican-friendly state, right? I mean, we have Ron DeSantis here. I'm, I'm sitting here in Miami. We have Ron DeSantis. We have Donald Trump. We have a, a Palm Beach is known for being a very strong Republican place. Um, and so I think that th they, they thought this through um, and there are Trump appointed judges in the federal court here, but um, it, I, I don't think it matters because the feds feel confident that regardless of who they pick for the jury, that the jury is going to be impartial and they're going to see the facts for, for what they are. What kind of defense do you think Trump's legal team will mount and what do you make of his two top attorneys resigning from the case? Well, they're in conflict with each other because what, and, and we know that Donald Trump uh, does that a lot with his, the people who work closely with him, his lawyers, his advisors, he will turn on them in an instant. And we're seeing this already that potentially he's now saying that his lawyers advised him to do this. And it's, it's going to be a very interesting um, uh, defense. I think that's the only defense he has. He's used that before with, uh, with um, the, the uh, Stormy Daniels case. So he has, he's certainly used that defense before and we'll see, you know, hey, look, I did this, but my lawyers told me it was okay. I certainly asked questions of them. Could I keep this or could I file this away or whatever? And my lawyer said, sure. So now he is in direct conflict with his lawyers. They can't represent him anymore. And he's going to have to find a new team, which is something that, you know, is out of his playbook. All right. Attorney Tamara Holder, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Still ahead on Scripps News Live, continuing coverage of the developing news. I'm going to be speaking with a guest about details from the unsealed indictment against former President Trump right after this. Continuing coverage on the indictment of former President Donald Trump with new charges surrounding the classified documents investigation. Reaction from around the country as Trump's legal exposure deepens. Tonight at 8, 7 central on Scripps News Tonight. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. 
right now. Get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. I'm gonna sell my life insurance Cause I don't need it anymore My kids are grown My wife is great Let's settle up the score It's time to travel to Pally Spend retirement happy Call 877-LEZ 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 And sell your policy You can sell all or art Live your life play if you've had a change in health or you're over 65 and paying for $100,000 or more in a life insurance policy you don't need, get paid for it instead. Take the money that you get, gonna live it up, you bet. Call 877 easy 877 easy 877 easy and sell your policy. The Athletic. Subscribe today. Develop a gorgeous app with Fiverr. You'll need your product manager, QA engineer, and Omar, a Fiverr freelance product designer with an impressive number of orders who will join your team from home. Smart and cozy. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. Local. National and worldwide headlines, breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Continuing coverage on the indictment of former President Donald Trump with new charges surrounding the classified documents investigation. Reaction from around the country as Trump's legal exposure deepens. Tonight at 8, 7 central on Scripps News Tonight. Back now to our continuing coverage of the unprecedented legal peril of former President Donald Trump. He was indicted for the second time yesterday, this time by the United States government, on 37 counts related to his alleged mishandling of classified documents. Jamil Jaffer is the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute, and he joins us now live. Uh, Jamil, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Jamil, question, because we've never seen a, a former president criminally charged once, let alone twice. Let's talk about how unprecedented this situation is that we're watching unfold right now. Yeah, it is. It's quite unprecedented. Not only has uh, a former president been charged with a significant range of federal crimes, uh, you know, 40 plus counts uh, of federal federal crimes, but beyond that, He's being charged by a Justice Department that ultimately reports up to a president that's running for re-election. He's running for re-election to that same office. This is a situation that's politically fraught for everyone involved. Now, you have a background in national security, like I was just saying, and some of the documents that he's accused of keeping were related to intelligence on U.S. and foreign nuclear capabilities. Jamil, what are your thoughts? How much of a risk could Trump have been putting the U.S. in? I mean, the risk is is dramatic, if you think about it. There are 31 documents listed in count one, uh, the willful retention uh, and unlawful retention of classified documents or national security information. And you look at the list of documents there and you see that a number of them are marked top secret, some sensitive compartmented information, some with whose the markings are even redacted because they're special access programs uh, that are so sensitive, even the markings can't be revealed. I mean, you look at the context of those documents and you realize that, you know, when you're talking about top secret material, we're talking about extremely serious harm to national security uh, that could be done if those were released or obtained by foreign nations. And what are the top charges in this indictment so far? I know that you've probably had a, had a chance to take a look at it, read through it. Um, what can you tell us about those charges and how severe of a penalty they could potentially carry? Yeah, so the primary uh, focus of the charges is this, this willful retention of national defense information. The idea there being that the president had access to these materials, 
He then uh, left and took these materials with him, uh, retained them when he wasn't authorized to do so, um, and then when asked to return them, did not return them. Now, that's one set of charges. There's 31 documents listed, 31 counts, 31 separate documents listed in that charge. And then beyond that, there are charges about obstruction of justice, uh, withholding of documents and the like, uh, where they describe a process that the president went through with his attorneys, suggesting to his attorneys uh, that they not uh, not tell the Justice Department that these documents existed, claim they didn't have them, and then directed, apparently, according to the uh, indictment alleged uh, by the indictment, remember, it's worth noting, the president is innocent until proven guilty, um, but uh, the indictment says that he told his aide to move boxes out of the room that, the, that his attorney was going to search uh, so that his attorney didn't find all these documents or a number of these documents. That obviously itself suggests not just not just obstruction, but conspiracy and agreement between two parties and an overt act, the moving of those boxes, uh, to, uh, to, to further uh, this obstruction of justice. So there's a number of charges uh, that are levied against the president and his aide, Walt Natawa, Nat Nauta. And so that's what's in play here um, in these charges. And finally, with respect to the, the penalties, each of those charges, some of them have penalties of up to five years. Some carry a penalty of up to 20 years per count and a fine of up to $250,000. So if these uh, these uh, charges are he's convicted and he gets the maximum penalty and they run consecutively, he could be in jail for up to hundreds of years. Obviously, he won't live that long, but that's what's on the table here. Yeah, uh, the penalties are quite severe, as, as, as you put it. Uh, but he's not the only one who's being indicted here because his former aide, Walt Nata, has, is also being charged in this case. So what exactly are prosecutors saying that his role was in this operation? I know that he was seen on surveillance video moving some of those boxes around. Some of those boxes allegedly were being hidden in places like bathrooms and bedrooms. Uh, what do you think is at stake right now for Nata? Well, the claim on the table, he's got he's been uh, indicted on a number of similar charges to the president. Some of his charges also carry penalties of up to 20 years per count um, and some that carry penalties of five years uh, and also that same monetary penalty as well. So he's got a significant amount of exposure as well. The core of the claim uh, with respect to uh, Mr. Nauta um, and the president together are these conspiracy claims, the obstruction of justice, the withholding of documents claims, uh, not the uh, the um, the ones related to the willful retention of classified material. Walt never had that access, uh, but the but the president is, is purported to have engaged in, a, in in an effort with him to hide these documents, to put them away where his lawyers couldn't find them, where the FBI couldn't find them as well, um, and ultimately that's uh, what's in play uh, for Walt, and he's got a significant amount of personal exposure as well. You might see uh, an effort uh, there to, uh, to pressure him to cooperate with the investigation um, and potentially uh, testify against the president. That might be what these charges are about as well. Yeah, we're going to have to watch this one closely. Jamil Jaffer, always appreciate your insight and your expertise. Great to see you, my friend. Thanks. And we'd like to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and ScrippsNews.com as well, as we continue to follow this developing story. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. 
So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. It is now 31 minutes after the hour. Here are some of the other stories that we're keeping an eye on for you today. The mystery of long COVID cases might soon be solved just by looking at wastewater samples tracking community spread. Researchers say that by looking at genetic sequencing in these samples, they've been able to find dozens of unique strains of coronavirus. They say the mutated strains could be from people who've been living with chronic and serious COVID infections now for years. Some people might not even know that they're infected. Texas Governor Greg Abbott announcing a buoy barrier along the Rio Grande River in an effort to combat illegal migrant border crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border. Public safety officials are saying the first 1,000 feet of buoys will be installed at Eagles Pass. The deployment is going to cost less than a million dollars and is set to begin immediately. All right, if you are still missing a tax refund, pay attention. And that's because the IRS is trying to track down one and a half million Americans who are still owed their share of unclaimed tax refunds from the year 2019. That is one and a half billion dollars worth of refunds. So if you think that you are owed, you now have until July 17th to submit a tax return to claim that refund. If you don't make the deadline, then the government will keep the money. All right, we continue to follow historic news right now out of Washington. According to the Justice Department, the former president has been federally indicted on 37 counts of criminal charges. According to documents, the charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information. It's all followed by one count each of conspiracy to obstruct justice, withholding a document or record, corruptly concealing a document in a federal investigation, and another for concealing a document, plus a scheme to conceal and false statements and representations. Special Counsel Jack Smith spoke at the top of the hour about the case and the gravity of the security issues at stake. The men and women of the United States intelligence community and our armed forces dedicate their lives to protecting our nation and its people. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States and they must be enforced. Now, as news of the indictment broke last night, the former president posted a video statement to his Truth Social website, and he railed against the Justice Department's case, calling it a, quote, weaponization of government. Trump also said he's been summoned to appear at a federal courthouse in Miami Tuesday. The case will reportedly be overseen by a Trump appointee, Judge Eileen Cannon. She's a former federal prosecutor who issued favorable rulings for Trump in legal challenges with the DOJ last year. Trump's one-time vice president, now 2024 rival Mike Pence, responded to the news during a campaign stop in New Hampshire. He told the crowd there that he is deeply troubled by this indictment. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this. I had hoped the Department of Justice would see its way clear to resolve these issues with the former president without moving forward with charges. The former vice president says he believes the indictment will further divide the nation. He also called Trump's previous indictment in March a, quote, outrage. Now, apart from the special counsel's case, the former president is facing a separate state indictment in New York, and he's under investigation by a grand jury right now in Georgia. 
but none of these legal issues have hurt his standing with his supporters. Joel Lopez with Scripps West Palm Beach spoke with a group of them gathered near Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago. Supporters tonight, of course, very upset. As you can see, there's still a small crowd behind me calling the indictment a witch hunt. An indictment on former President Trump. How do you feel about the indictment? Do you feel like he's innocent, guilty? I know he's innocent. It's not even how a feeling. It's a fact. Rushed out a crowd of about 20 supporters to the bridge outside of his Mar-a-Lago home. This is what they do when they can't find anything. They go keep attacking and attacking and attacking. People brought their banners, flags, hats, and trucks. We love Trump. We love Trump to the very spot where many of them came to rally when the FBI first raided Mar-a-Lago back in August of last year. Biden's supposed to go indictment because he's having thousand, thousand the docu classified document in his Corvette in the garage. Nothing happened to him. For supporters like Donald Tarka Jr. I asked him that question specifically. I said, what do you want us to do? He said, keep supporting us. He says this is a low point for our country, calling the indictment a witch hunt on the former president. All the other leaders of the countries have got to be looking at our country going, what a joke. What, we've turned into a banana republic. You know, we're, we're arresting our political allies. How wrong is that? Over some, over paperwork? Now, we have heard cars driving by with people shouting things like lock him up, but supporters here say that that's not going to stop them, and they plan to be here again into the weekend. Reporting in Palm Beach, I'm Joel Lopez. Now, the Bidens made an appearance in North Carolina this afternoon. The president and first lady toured Nash Community College in Rocky Mountain and spoke to students about their careers in workforce training programs meant to prepare them for high-paying jobs in the state. The two are headed to Fort Liberty to speak with service members next. And over at the White House right now, mom seems to be the word. The Biden administration has been fairly quiet after the news of former President Trump's indictment. The indictment relates to Trump's handling of classified documents. White House correspondent Haley Bull tells us more. Veronica, President Biden said today he has no comment. When the news broke, a White House official tells us senior staff shared reports with the president. The White House says they had no advanced knowledge. Beyond that, the administration has really steered clear of commenting. Uh, during Biden's administration, the White House has maintained the Justice Department operate separately, distancing themselves from perceptions of influence. That remains the case today. A deputy White House press secretary says the president believes in respecting the DOJ J's independence and integrity. But Trump and a number of congressional Republicans have accused the Biden administration of, quote, weaponizing the department. Before news of the indictment broke on Thursday, Biden reiterated the Justice Department's separation when pressed on Trump's attacks. Listen. Because you notice, I have never once, not one single time, suggested the Justice Department what they should do or not do relative to bringing a charge or not bringing a charge. I'm honest. President Biden has faced his own investigation over classified documents. The attorney general also appointed a special counsel in that instance. The difference is in how the documents were found. According to the attorney general's office, early this year, the White House counsel notified the National Archives that documents were found at the Penn Biden Center in D.C. and later in a garage at Biden's Delaware home from his time as vice president. Meanwhile, as this all unfolds today, President Biden is traveling in North Carolina to talk about workforce training programs programs as well as support for military families. Veronica. All right, Haley Bull at the White House. Haley, thanks. The DOJ is reportedly investigating an alleged election-related scheme in Wyoming, this one involving a conservative-backed effort to infiltrate the Democratic National Committee. Reports of an undercover operation during the 2020 election first surfaced in a 2021 story by The New York Times. It allegedly involved attempts by conservatives to gain access to progressive groups and campaigns, as well as the offices of both Democrats and moderate Republican elected officials. Prosecutors are now looking into possible campaign finance law violations. And in the meantime, the Pentagon is sending more air defense systems and ammunition to Ukraine. That aid package worth more than $2 billion. The Pentagon is saying funding will come from the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, and that gives the Department of Defense the authority to work with industry partners. The Pentagon is saying this latest round of aid includes more ammo for Patriot air defense systems, Hawk air defense systems and missiles, artillery rounds and training and maintenance support.
Coming up next on Scripps News Live, encouraging news after a drop in the number of homicides in the United States this year. We're going to take a closer look at that new report straight ahead. And we would like to hear from you. You can always give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. That number on your screen, one 833 scripts Share your comments and your story ideas. This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called Original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage plans, and Part D for prescription drug coverage. Call 800-912-2786 now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. We can look up your plan and see if you're missing out on a plan with extra benefits or if your income qualifies you to reduce costs on your prescription medications. Did you know there are different enrollment periods like the Medicare annual enrollment period when beneficiaries can enroll in or change coverage? But there are also certain conditions or qualifications that may allow you to qualify for a special enrollment period any time of the year. So call the number on your screen now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. This is a free service that you can call at absolutely no cost to you. I'm on Medicare. I called to see if my income qualified for lower prescription medication costs. The friendly agent was very knowledgeable and I found out I qualified for a special enrollment period. So I'm so glad I called. We can look up your plan and see if you are missing out on a plan with extra benefits. We can also check to see if your income qualifies you to reduce the cost of your prescription medications. And we can even tell you if you qualify for a special enrollment period. It's your free Medicare coverage checkup at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-912-2786. And you can speak with a licensed agent who can check up on your plan and answer your questions. The Medicare Benefits and Questions line is open and anyone on or eligible for Medicare can call. The call and Medicare coverage checkup is free with no obligation. Call now. We love talking to people with Medicare, and the call is free. Just call 800-912-2786. 800-912-2786. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep. Dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering Dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, Jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my Endurance Auto Protection Plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to EnduranceWarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit EnduranceWarranty.com for a free quote. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. New this hour, Jorn Vandersloot, now formally arraigned on extortion and wire fraud charges. He pleaded not guilty during a court appearance in Birmingham, Alabama today. He's accused of defrauding Natalie Holloway's mother of tens of thousands of dollars. Holloway vanished in 2005 during a trip to Aruba, and Vandersloot was one of the last people to see her alive. He's never faced charges in connection to her disappearance, and Holloway's body has never been found. Vandersloot has been in a prison in Peru for the last decade for the murder of another woman, Stephanie Flores. The families of the Nashville school shooting victims will own the shooter's writings. The attorney representing the school shooter's parents says that he will help transfer ownership to the families. They've been seeking ownership to prevent the writings from becoming public. Families believe publicizing the material could lead to another school shooting. Now, as of right now, those documents remain in police custody. But you should know that the parents and the families 
have asked our attorneys to leave no stone unturned as we pursue our objective to keep all of these writings uh, out of the, the public domain and anything that might inspire future attacks on other communities. The 28-year-old shooter killed six people during the March 27th attack before being shot by police. So a recent Pew Research poll shows that murder rates are down 12% nationwide compared to last year. And that decline is on track to break a record, and it underscores the growing efforts to ensure public safety. Scripps News crime and justice correspondent Jamal Andres breaks down those numbers for us and some of the reasons for that decline. 2020 saw a historic rise in violence across the country. I've seen so much death. The 30% nationwide jump in homicides is by some estimates the largest year-over-year -year increase in more than a century, according to the CDC. It starts adding up when this is what you start. I should be collecting baseball cards, not, you know, obituaries. Thankfully, 2023 could see a historic correction as well. It doesn't feel good to report a 20% increase in murder. It, it feels a lot better to, to see that in these places, these things are going down. Jeff Asher is a crime analyst and co-founder of AH Datalytics. Asher's research shows a significant drop in murders across the country for the first third of this year. There was a 9.1% decrease in 1996. That was previously the largest decrease percent-wise from one year to the next. Um, if we get a 10% decrease this year, it'll be the first time we had double-digit decrease in murder. Cities like Milwaukee, Rochester, and Raleigh have experienced as big as a 58% decline in murder. Meanwhile, homicides are down by at least 12% in more than 90 cities nationwide. And Asher says much like the uptick in 2020, the downturn in killings has impacted big and small cities. Small town Jackson, 150,000 people. Atlanta, I think close to a half a million people in the city itself and then Philly, a couple of million people. And so three examples of places that are all seeing 25 plus percent declines in murder. And while the numbers are concrete, the reasons for the changes are much more difficult to nail down. You look at the numbers and the truth speaks. Uh, people are coming together. Uh, we're safer than we were last year um, and, and we're never satisfied. Several cities have hired more police officers and increased overtime for the officers they have. Cities like Houston and New York have launched gun buyback programs. And across the country, many of the social community-led crime prevention programs that were forced to stop or go online during the pandemic have started their work again. The pandemic clearly has played an important role, but the role of the impact of the pandemic differs depending on the type of crime one looks at. Richard Rosenfeld is a criminologist and the co-author of the Council on Criminal Justice 2022 Crime Report. In many places, the homicide rise in 20 didn't really begin until uh, immediately after the George Floyd murder. And so I wouldn't discount a decline in confidence in the police and its consequences for cooperating with and reporting to the police. Uh, as a contributor to the homicide rise. Unfortunately, though, this drop in murders has not correlated with a fall in mass shootings. According to the Gun Violence Archive, 24% more people have been injured during a mass shooting in the first three months for 2023 compared to last year. Jamal Andrus, Scripps News. The haze and smoke from Canadian wildfires are clearing out of New York and other mid-Atlantic states right now. Now that smoke has been shifting to the Midwest and then moving south, that air can irritate your eyes, your ears and your throat. Some people in Richmond, Virginia have been saying that they are altering their plans and just staying indoors as much as possible. Not taking the long dog walk today, not going to the park. And we're in and out of stores, taking it slow, and we're not doing as much shopping as we usually do. Probably anyone for any prolonged period of time is going to start feeling uh, something. They're going to start sneezing, having watery eyes, maybe even have a, have a cough. Uh, and so I would try to really limit that exposure time. 
and take a look at how extensive the smoke is. Look at that. It's coming right out of Canada, straight into Detroit, and then extending all the way down to Raleigh, North Carolina. Also right now, an early El Nino has been forming in the Pacific, and it's expected to increase global temperatures this year. Earlier today, I spoke with Kim Cobb from Brown University about some of the other impacts that we can expect, especially as hurricane season gets underway. Well, that's a good news, bad news story, depending on where you live. El Nino and uh, sister cooling event La Nina, uh, characterized by a series of winners and losers, many of whom are quite predictable. In this case, North Atlantic hurricane season is projected to be suppressed in line with El Nino's uh, dampening effect on the North Atlantic hurricane season uh, that's been observed uh, during past events. Now, of course, if you are living in the West Pacific, we expect a dramatic uptick in hurricane and typhoon related activity across that portion of the world as those water temperatures warm uh, during the El Nino related warming that originates in the tropical Pacific. Uh, but obviously for the U.S. a good news story for the Gulf and the Southeast United States. And Dr. Kim Cobb says there are still six months for El Nino to strengthen and develop before the system peaks this winter and next spring. The Pacific Northwest can expect to be warmer and drier while the southeastern United States will likely be wetter and cooler during that time. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a group in Ohio hoping to get more students excited about a future in STEM. We're going to take you inside their mission next. And we'd like to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'll be right back. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they did in just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. We're spending some time outside the International Space Station today. And don't worry, 
It was on purpose. Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg were installing a solar array on the ISS. Today's venture outside marked Bowen's ninth spacewalk, and it is Hoberg's very first. Kids in Northeast Ohio getting a taste of what it's actually like to be a scientist. A local outreach group is setting up immersive science labs all across the area right now. Inside of one high school classroom is Ground Zero, where students conduct all kinds of experiments, observations, and hands-on lab work. The nonprofit's co-founder says not only does it make science more accessible, but it's also a pathway to inspire future leaders in STEM. And we hope that they walk away knowing that they can be scientists, but they can also do anything that they want to. And a lot of these skills are things they can apply to any career. Lincoln West School of Science and Health focuses on mastery-based learning. It's the only school in the country where students go to school in an actual hospital. Very cool. So movie lovers, it's time to get your popcorn ready because the second Friday of June is National Movie Night. And you can celebrate at home by streaming the latest flick. But if you want to get creative, then you can make yourself a movie snack buffet. Or how about a movie night gathering where everyone gets dressed up, all gussied up for a red carpet? You could also head to your local drive-in theater, or you could try the DIY version. You know, the one with the bed sheet and the projector, and then you go camping in your backyard. Have lots of fun. And a quick programming reminder right here. Tonight it is game time on ION. You can watch WNBA action starting at 8 o'clock with the Phoenix Mercury and the Dallas Wings. That's followed by the Chicago Sky and the Los Angeles Sparks. That begins at 10. To find out where you can watch, head over to IONWNBA.com. All right, we know more about the charges former President Donald Trump is facing, but how is it going to impact his presidential campaign and how will it all affect other presidential hopefuls? Our Del Walters has much more on that and more coming up in the next hour. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. The news continues right here on Scripps News. In the meantime, we'll be right back.